Hello, gorgeous. My name is Jessica Angelari, and today we have a very juicy talk, and it's all about sex. So often I receive questions from women who come to work with me around how do you have better sex? How do you have full body orgasms? How do you be, bring pleasure into your life? Or sometimes they come to me thinking that there's something wrong with them because they can't get in the mood or they think they have a low libido because they're always tired and their partner wants it all the time and they just don't. So today we are going to dive into some of the things, some of the myths that I think are really that we are holding on to collectively as women, as society and around sex and how we can really start honoring our sexuality as sacred so we can start stepping into our power. The first thing is we have to stop thinking like men. Stop thinking about sex like a man. But before we get into it, my name is Jessica Angel Larry and I am a feminine embodiment pleasure and intimacy coach and my whole soul, my great mission in life is to share my experience and to guide women into reclaiming this power of theirs, their juice, their erotica, to start guiding women back into this path of really coming home to who they really are and to come back into this truth of their heart, the truth that lies within their wombs and in their sensuality. And so then in that way, they develop the most loving relationship with themselves and then with their beloved. Now let's get into it with the five myths around our sexuality. We have been taught that an orgasmic experience is something that is quick and that it is performance based, that we need to reach an end goal. But it is so much more than this. Your sexuality is this pathway from sensuality that you have cultivated. It is in your ability to slow down and savor every moment and experience life in every waking moment. And through that, you awaken to your pleasures and sensations. You awaken to your erotic woman, your ability to feel into your aliveness. And that can only happen when you are present, when you are dropped into your body. So these myths that I'm about to go over, I believe are important for us to really look into when it comes to becoming orgasmic and the beliefs that we have around intimacy and sexuality and how they are restricting or how they could be restricting your sexual experience. So the idea is to just bring awareness into this. And I've handpicked these myths as I feel that these are the most dominating ones in our society and in our feminine psyche collectively. And as I'm saying these myths, I also want you to know that there is nothing wrong with you. This is not a place for you to feel judgment or anger or shame around it either. Instead, this is a place that I'm inviting you to just explore and bring some, yeah, just some awareness around it. Can you explore this and to know that there is another way and just to start creating this new dialogue with yourself and a dialogue with some of the conditions that may have been placed on you and on us. So myth one is sex is dominating and done like a porno. We tend to receive a lot of our education from, from pornography, from media, from magazines. And a lot of the time, sexuality is exploited, focusing just on the genitals and that sex is depicted as this 
crazy, passionate, throw yourself against the wall kind of act. It's very manufactured and very masculine. It's a very linear way of looking at their sacred act. There's not, nothing wrong with this either. You know, there's nothing wrong with wanting to or desiring that wild kind of sex, but there is the sacredness that is missing in this, this connection with love. So if we look at, uh, just as an example, Samantha from Sex in the City, I loved Samantha. I think a lot of us do if you're a Sex in the City fan like me. But the more that I became more connection, more connected to my sexual power, the more that I realized how much she was being depicted as this powerful woman and instead what she was really doing was holding on to her heart closed she was creating a barrier a wall around her heart to prevent herself from really feeling fully from another in this divine union and she used sex as her weapon which is very powerful because that is our power as a woman. And so I think a lot of us have really learned that, yes, our sex is our power, but because, you know, we can, I'm all for sex liberation and all of that, but just because we are open and liberated to have sex, it doesn't mean that we're necessarily sexually empowered. When we are fed this idea that sex is fast, we tend to get hooked onto the idea that onto the end result and we have to quickly orgasm. Otherwise there is something wrong with us. And if you're not, and that we then go into this fixing mode. And this is, I believe, how we then start to relate to ourselves even outside of the bedroom. The thing we have to understand is that your sexual energy is this flow of energy. It's making you happen. It's this, this energy that creates life. It creates life all around you. It's a feeling. It's this breath of life flowing through you. It's this juice that really creates beauty within you and around you it's your sex is is a ritual it's a sacred act and then when two people are really dropped into their sensations through their body there is something that beautiful that happens there is something magical that happens they're connected with this sacredness with their heart, with their breath, with their with their bodies, and they're really immersed in this in this divine act. And this is real intimacy. This is where you sexually become alive. So the idea of sex, sexuality, your sexual energy is and and how you connect with that is really dependent on how you really relate to yourself how do you know yourself how dropped in are you in your body how willing are you to let go let go of the facade let go of the mask let go of how things need to look and act and sound in and out of the bedroom now this leads me to myth two that intimacy fades in a relationship. We are often fed these ideas that sex is this mind-blowing activation of fire and passion. We see it a lot in movies and it lasts for 30 seconds. And then there must be something wrong with our relationship if that fire isn't happening at that peak anymore. Because if it is a relationship, it means then that fire fizzles out. That's what we're told, right? Because we expect it to still look the same as when we were first dating or when we first connected with our partner. 
I believe in a relationship, your ex sexual experience actually becomes more developed, more connected, more vibrant. But there are also some factors and challenges that can alter your desire for sex depending on where the relationship is at depending on where you are at in your in your day it all depends on your mood on the overall energy of your day and so therefore our sexual experience is always changing it's adaptive it's fluid it's never always going to be that crazy passionate fiery act there will be days where you feel like that it also depends on where you are in your menstrual cycle there will be times where it is gentle and soft and meditative it can be playful wild and raw and yet it is still very spiritual because our hearts in the relationship are divinely connected so my point to this is sex is never predictable. It's never an act of something we have seen in movies. It's always a mystery. We go into it differently depending on where we are. Now, the important thing here to know is that even though I believe intimacy in a relationship never fades, if our hearts are always divinely in this beautiful dance together what can get in the way is the lack of presence with yourself when you're not present with yourself and you don't know how to drop in especially after a stressful day we find it hard to then be present with our beloved so knowing yourself deeply and knowing what turns you on what makes your skin tingle what kind of touch do you love what kind of how do you love breath? How do you know yourself with your sound? Knowing yourself deeply and allowing space for this is so important. So then you can then connect with your partner and, con and communicate with him what it is that you love, because that's going to look differently to all of us. The third myth around sex that I wanted to break down was women and men get turned on the same way. This is not true. We open to pleasure in different ways. It's a fact. Men get turned on differently and very quickly. They boil themselves up much faster. They lubricate much faster. They... I believe this is as well why we have been given lubricant because they it is all about a quick thing for them. It doesn't work the same for us. You know, and I think this relates to the world that we live in today. It's so fast paced, but you can change this through you practicing slowing down for yourself, connecting with yourself on deep, intimate in deep intimate ways that doesn't involve a sexual act. A woman ignites her sexuality through her heart. This is the difference. When our heart is open, we then become aroused without focusing on our genitals. That comes after. Your yoni will open and love you so much more when you are connected here first. And that might mean that you learn how to drop in and connect with your heart. And that's why I love teaching the breast massage as one of my rituals in my program. For men, their arousal is directly linked to the pelvic area and then his heart. When women feel safe, completely safe in the body, she then receives pleasure and then receives him. That's how we are different. When we trust, when we fully feel his full consciousness, we have to feel him present and fully <clears throat> connected deeply with us, with our heart. It is then we open up fully. If not, our yoni stays closed because our heart is closed. We aren't feeling 100% safe. So again, know yourself deeply. Start 
connecting and in, and immersing yourself with pleasurable sensual practices so then you can share with him what makes you feel good what do you require from him maybe you require him to fully show up for you because he's not present maybe it's a certain touch share your sound with him start feeling confident in your sound start knowing what that feels like And share with him what ignites you. You need to discover this for yourself. You need to know how it feels to be in your body. We can't just leave this all up to him. When women know that their power is in their sexuality, we also realize what we need, what makes us feel safe, what makes us feel strong and confident and then you do stand in your knowing and then you know as well when you start to know yourself deeply you also start to know your sacred know you start to trust that your know is everything so if you're not feeling 100% your know is everything and knowing and practicing how to say no allows you to honor your boundaries, your body, your heart, your yoni. She will know when you are fully activated or not. And that's why it's important we understand how to listen to her signals as well. So the more practice you have in tuning into your sensuality and your sensations, the more you understand the language of your body and what she requires in that moment. From this space, you know you are always held by your own love. Therefore, you know that you are no less if you say no, because your no matters, especially in a sexual experience. Okay, my love, myth four I want to dive into is you think that if you're not being turned on or that you're not wanting sex, this means that there is something wrong with you. Now, there are many reasons why you may not be feeling it in that moment. This is not something that you can force. You can definitely intentionally make space for intimacy, but you don't just push a, bu- a button and then you're just turned on like that. There are many reasons why you may not be warmed up yet or not feeling it in that moment or you're not desiring it in that moment. Our life usually consists of us working really hard. And that is why it's so important to practice igniting your sensuality in your day-to-day life even if it's five minutes a day to start bringing in sensuality, to start feeling the fullness of your sensations in safety, to start remembering what it feels like to slow down, to be dropped in. We have to know what connection feels like because we're not doing this in our in our busy lifestyles. We haven't created space we have to create space to really know what deeply turns you on and we can do that through pleasure practices another thing I've noticed as well with a lot of women that have come to work with me is that we women are carrying a lot of guilt or shame around our own sexuality and that can be unconscious as well when we're carrying this shame or this guilt around our sexuality we tend to move through life pressing down our life force energy and then we haven't we haven't cleansed we haven't cleaned out some of the past experiences or past emotions that are stored within our our pelvic floor within our womb so often what we aren't told as women is that we are holding numbness and pain in the womb in the pelvic area or in the yoni because we haven't learned how to connect and drop into the body and so we then may feel pain as well during sex or we don't feel like it at all and then we may even feel embarrassed and then it becomes something suppressed but this doesn't mean that you're broken this is a a common thing that we just haven't learned how to tend to we haven't learned how to move 
some emotions and dense energy within our lower our lower chakras and we've just fed we've been fed into this belief that there is something wrong with us that we aren't desirable we aren't sexual tension in your pelvic floor and your yoni prevents you from fully relaxing into pleasure and receiving this is why it's important to have these tools in tools to feel safe in the body to be held to explore what is really going on there to really explore your sensual movements so you can start to move through these self-doubts and guilts of receiving the more you can relax and feel safe and stay present and be comfortable with the sensations that are there there is no good or bad that are there within your body the more you unlock yourself to pleasure. Now, myth five, I wanted to break down, dismantle, and I think it relates to a lot of the other ones that I have spoken about, but you can see that they all intertwine with one another. The myth is we feel fulfilled after a quick orgasm. This is not true. Yes, we can have quick orgasms, but this doesn't mean we are necessarily fulfilled. As I have said, a woman is aroused through her heart and then through her sexual centers. The truth is a woman cannot connect with her yoni, with her sexual energy, unless her heart is fully open because that is her place of arousal. Sure, you can have orgasms and sex without your heart being involved. But after a while, you may find yourself maybe feeling frustrated or even feeling unfulfilled or, you know, you're desiring more. Your heart is your other power, is your other feminine center. It is the glue to your primal life force energy. This is everything that a woman can give to herself and to her partner, her love. If we're not open and soft and surrendered to the heart, then we can't really experience that cosmic opening, that orgasmic experience that does take you to different dimensions. And that's why we need to move beyond the idea that being orgasmic is only focusing on the genitals. When we focus on the heart space, however, we experience magic. For a man, his cosmic orgasmic heart lies in his genitals. For a man's heart to open, his sexuality needs to be engaged. But we all know that he feeds off our life force, our vibrancy, our erotic, our innocence, which is essentially you in your feminine. You know, when you're you're giggling, you're having fun, you're enjoying life, you're singing, he opens his heart to this. And this is how he connects with you by receiving this beautiful, delicious, sensual aspect of you, fully connected, fully embodied. And he thrives and drinks up this medicine of yours. Now for us women, as I've said, our arousal works differently. It's the other way around. We are dropped in and open to our beloved in a sexual experience when our heart is open, when a man listens and communicates and makes us feel comfortable, when he helps us to feel open, a around him we op only open up when we feel his consciousness and our heart doesn't lie we know when he is open we know when he's aware and when he when he's present and when he's not for a woman's sexuality to be open her heart needs to be opened first for us it's safety in the heart and the body for us it's presence in the body and you can do this and practice this for yourself. You have this medicine within you to ignite in your sexual power for yourself. So you don't have to rely on someone else to make you feel safe and delicious and open. 
this is the deep reclamation of the feminine, which occurs in your sexuality, reclaiming your pleasures and your sexuality as yours. And the most direct way of connecting with your heart is through your breasts, your, the extension of your heart. And I've done a video on this. You can check that out, why I love the breast massage and why it will help you to connect and deepen your relationship with your heart further and to know what it is that what kind of touch you require and how to really meet with some of the pain and the fears and the shame through this beautiful sensual touch that you can offer yourself. And this is exactly what we do in Feminine Remembrance, Come Home to Yourself, the 10-week group immersion as well. We need to tend to our heart in order for our yoni to be tended to. We need to tend to our heart in order for us to really know what makes us feel comfortable and delicious. So beautiful. Visualize and think about which one of these that I have mentioned out of the five myths that you really resonate with. Maybe it's just one. Maybe it's all of them. Which ones do you feel maybe you've been holding on to and that you would like to let go of? Let's let go of the myth that holds you back from experiencing that beautiful lovemaking and your connection with life through your pleasures in and out of the bedroom. And let's engage with our sexuality in, in a new way, which is deeply, authentically raw and truthful to you and to him and to your relationship. And this really takes the pressure off, off you as well. There are many tools that I love sharing with women, such as erotic movement and like I said, the breast massage, which will really revolutionize the way you give and receive pleasure without feeling guilty. It will change the way you feel about your body, the way you receive, the way you experience all of life. And it will create this new, beautiful, delicious connection between you and spirit, this beautiful dance of love which we're all here for. And if you would love for me to hold your hand in this journey of reclamation of the feminine, I'd love to be there for you. Remember my seven day free program, Erotic Feminine Embodiment is a great way to start this beautiful journey. Okay, my loves, I'm here for you. Thank you for being here. And Thank you for being in this community. Drop a like if you loved this video and I will see you soon for your next, your next video. My name is Jessica Angeleri and so much love to you. Mwah.